Hi, I'm going to start up the boiler. It's been about five years since I first put together my first boiler walkthrough, so I think it's probably about time to update it. Um, I've made some changes to our instructions in this version, so I haven't taken the straight O&M instructions. So if you're following the O&M manual, instruction manual instructions, then you may want to go back and see my other video, which outlines some of the, the problems in that. Um, but this one, I'm going to follow through an edited version that should be a little more straightforward for starting up the boiler. Um, so my instructions over at the side, and I'm going to follow through, and I'll run it live on the simulator as we go. So uh, first thing that I want to do is check my boiler water level. So I'm going to go to page 80, and I'm going to note that my water level is low. Uh, and I'd like it to be close to zero as my target. However, this boiler is going to swell a bit with its water. So I'm going to leave it a little bit short. Maybe around negative 50 millimeters is where I'd like it to be. So to do that, I'm going to follow through using my main feed water pump. It's going to go through my feed water control valve, which is controlled by this controller. And then it makes its way into the boiler through the discharge valve. So I'm going to open up my discharge valve. I'm going to manually adjust my feed water control valve to something a little more manageable. So maybe we'll have it 20% open. And then I'm going to turn on my feed water pump. My flow rate is increasing and we can see that my boiler level is going to start to rise. So maybe when I get to about minus 70, minus 80, something like that, I'm going to turn off my pump and leave it in this position. The pump will continue to pump a little bit of water even once I turn it off. So I'll leave it for a bit so I don't overshoot. If we have too much water where we're starting from, we could always drain some. So we have some drain pathways, so our blowdown pathways. Okay, so I'll turn off my pump. And it's, as you can see, it's going to continue to add a little bit of water. And I should be okay where it's going to stop. But yeah, if our level was too high, we could always drain some water. Okay, so let's continue. We're going to continue on. Step number two, we're going to open up our vents. So we have a vent on the boiler and we have a vent on our superheater. Step number three, we need to organize our fuel. So we'll go to page number five and we have a couple of fuel lines. So from our diesel oil service tank, we're going to open up our valve to our boiler. And in addition, our HFO service tank, since we're here, we're going to have the emergency shutoff valve and the supply valve to the boiler. Okay, let's go back to the boiler. So we're going to 84. So our fuel is going to come in from here and it will pass through our diesel oil pump and then it will make its way through our system. So um, I'm going to switch to my diesel oil burner type. I'm going to switch this valve position so it's aligned with my diesel oil side and then I'm going to turn on my diesel oil pump. I have the boiler air fan so that's going to deliver combustion air. I'll turn it on. And then in step number six we have a number of controllers. So we have these four controllers and uh, we're going to go through and just make some changes to them. Um, so First one, fuel manually at 10. So my oil controller is my fuel controller, and it's going to be set manually at 10%. I have my air. It is in manual mode, um, but I'm going to adjust it to 100%. My oxygen controller is manually set at 50%, as well the auto set point is at 1.5 and it is in manual mode so that's good and my master controller um, 
7% is its auto set point. And I'm going to just set my manual set point to 10%. Okay, so I'm good with my controllers. Uh, next thing I want to do is reset any boiler trips. So I don't have any trip showing on my burner 1. Uh, my boiler has a trip, so I'm going to reset that. Step 8 is to initiate the purge cycle. So I'm starting my purge cycle now. And you can see that, first of all, my fan is providing some pressure and flow. And these dampers have opened up, so I have flow that's moving through the boiler. It's going to take any um, unburnt fuel that may be lingering in the boiler furnace area out with it, which means I don't have a risk of explosion when I light my flame. So my purge is just finished. Okay. When the purge indication releases, change the airflow controller value to manually 10. To start the flame, we're going to press the burner 1 on off button. Our pilot is going to start and we'll have a little pilot flame. And that's going to be quickly followed by our main flame initiating. So we'll see some flow of main fuel and we'll see our large flame that started. Okay, so we've established our flame. Now we just need to make some adjustments on it. So we're going to adjust our flame output by adjusting the fuel air mixtures and we're going to set our fuel manually to 4 and our air manually to 1. So our fuel is going to go to 4 and our air is going to go to 1. Okay. So what we should have now is a fairly low output but stable flame. And we're going to continue in this manner for a while. And we're going to do that to warm up our boiler. So if we look at what our boiler looks like right now, um, our drum temperature is 30 degrees. So we have a long way to go before we're going to warm up. So this is going to be 20 minutes, 30 minutes probably of runtime until we get to that point. So we have a statement there, pressure should now be raised according to standard boiler practice and the following sequence will bring the boiler online in about an hour or so. Okay. So our next step, number 12, is when we have built some pressure and so I'm going to fast forward to that point and we'll continue from when we've warmed up. Okay, so we're back. So uh, I let about 40 minutes of runtime go while this boiler was warming up, which is a great amount to let it warm up evenly. And we can see that our drum temperature is now up around uh, 100, so a little over. So we just started boiling, and you can see at that point, now we have pressure that's built up. And what's happening is we're building up steam. It's filling up this upper cavity of the drum, and it's making its way out through the vents. So we would normally let that vent for a while to make sure that we've driven off all of the air. Um, this is probably a little quick. It's only been a couple minutes that it's been venting for, but we may vent that for longer. Um, however, the suggested uh, transfer time for when we close our vents is when we've reached a pressure of 0.23 or 105 degrees in the drum. So we've met that, that point. And uh, what we are suggested to do is close off our vent and close off our superheater vent. Okay, we'll open up our main steam line drain. So now steam is going to be able to make its way not through our vents, but down through some of the main piping. Uh, we'll open up our main steam stop valve. Instead of opening it to 100%, what we would want to do is open it up 
a little bit gradually, so crack it open, allow a little bit of steam to make its way into the pipe. Temperature is rising and our pressure is going to be able to equalize a little bit. And maybe after about 30 seconds or so of having it open, um, we may be in a point where we can open it up and allow a little bit more steam. So I've suggested up to 100, but this might be a slower process in your plant. We have a couple other steps. We're going to go to page 05, and now that we have a bit of steam that's being produced, we're going to send it to start heating up fuel. So we have a, a valve to open up to our HFO service tank to supply steam to heat that tank. And in addition, we have a couple other heaters for our heavy fuel oil system. Now the heavy fuel oil system needs to be heated in order to, for it to first of all be able to flow and be pumped, but also to help with combustion. So we have a heat exchanger as well as heat tracing around all of those lines. And then we want to create a circulation, so we're going to turn on our HFO pump. We also have an atomizing steam valve, which will open up. And we now have all the preparations ready for our HFO system, and it's really up to the point of just getting things warmed up and ready to run. We have our next step. When the steam line pressure rises to 1, shut the steam line drain. So after we have built up some pressure in our pipe and it's had a chance to warm up, then we'll close off our drain. Okay, so we fit one as our pressure in our line, and we can close off our drain, meaning our we've likely removed enough condensate out of our line that we're not going to be at risk of water hammer and other issues. Um, again, in your plant, you may want to physically observe that. Um, in our simulator, we just go by permissives. This is a good time right now to check our water level. So just double check that we haven't run out of water. And now that we have some steam that we're using, that our water level isn't at risk of dropping. Um, and at the same time, we haven't swelled so much that our level has gotten too high. And I'm at minus 30, and that's perfect for our water level at this point. Okay. So now we're at the point where we just need to wait for some permissives. So in order for us to switch over to heavy fuel oil, we need a few things to happen. First of all, we need to have provided enough time for this tank to warm up. Um, we're going to need about 32 or 34 degrees in this tank in order for it to flow consistently. We also need to make sure that our steam lines have warmed up enough that our pump is able to consistently flow. We need to make sure we have an outlet temperature that is hot enough for it to flow and we need to ensure that we have um, enough pressure um, in our atomizing steam line so right now we're 1.5 we also want to check our boiler pressure looks like we're a little bit low so i'm just going to speed up time a little bit here and let's see um, us get to those permissives Okay. So our boiler pressure is increasing, our atomizing steam 
pressure is increasing. Pretty soon we hopefully should be able to see some flow Just double checking my fuel tank so it's up pretty close to my permissive now. And I'm building pressure. Okay. Now, one step that's pretty important is that we don't just sit here running the boiler because it doesn't have all of its safety controls in place right now. This boiler will run continuously until it overpressurizes and explodes. Um, so if at any point the boiler pressure goes above 7 bar, and we want to monitor that, our immediate action is going to be to turn off the burner so we cut the heat input or the energy input into that boiler. Okay, so just observing a few things, we have now looks like consistent flow of HFO. We've met our permissive for our atomizing steam, and we've met our permissive for our, our steam pressure. So I'm going to turn off the burner. And now I'm going to just work at doing my preparations to switch over my fuel. Okay, so um, I have a change that needs to happen here. Um, we're going to switch this valve this position, and we're going to switch our burner type to HFO. And now we're going to make some adjustments to our controls. So um, all of our controllers are going to go into auto. Um, however, we have to do them in a certain order. So air and fuel have to go first. So I suggest it fuel, air. Um, and we can adjust the auto set point on those, so that's okay. Our oxygen set point we want to confirm is at 1.5. And we're going to set our master controller to 7. We are going to reset our boiler trip. And we are then going to engage our burner management system. Okay. What burner management is going to do for us is it's going to monitor the boiler pressure and make some decisions. Uh, the main decision that it's going to make is do I need a flame on or not? And within our burner management we have a couple of limits. So it has a start limit of 6.1 bar and a stop limit of 7.5 bar. So if the boiler pressure drops below 6.1, that's going to trigger my flame to automatically restart. And if my pressure ever exceeds 7.5, the burner management system is going to automatically shut off the flame. So that burner management system is in charge now of starting or stopping the flame. And right now my pressure is within that range, right in the middle, so it's not prompting the boiler to turn on. And that's fine, it'll sit there until my pressure drops. I have uh, one last step here, which is my diesel oil pump. And at this point, I'm good with my combustion side. I want to just transition over to my feed water side at this point because if I leave this boiler unattended it will now run out of water. So uh, I'm going to set up my feed water system. So normally what we would do is first adjust our controller to a closed or close to closed position. So maybe I'll say 5% as my valve position. I'm going to turn on my main feed water pump and then I'm going to position this guy into auto.
I'm going to leave the pump on, so the pump in this case always stays on, and it should stabilize pretty close to my zero set point. And at this point I have my boiler running and I can then start using my steam that I'm producing to go to any of my um, consumers on my in my plant. As well, I have all of my steam turbines that can make use of the boiler now. So once I have this running, it unlocks a lot of different systems that I can be um, working on. All right, hope you hope you enjoyed this 2020 update.